Next we'll be making our grilled polenta. So we have goat cheese polenta, um, just uh, cornmeal and some milk cooked down. We set it in the walk-in and then once it's set, we cut it into these squares. Gets a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper, then it goes straight onto the grill. While it's on the grill, what we're trying to do is let it pick up some smokiness um, and also ob obviously get hot. So while that's finishing on the grill, we'll go ahead and uh, make the salad that goes with it. This is just asparagus, jumbo asparagus. We shave it, uh, cook it in uh, salted water, and then chill it down. We have some local cherry tomatoes here that we quartered, and then some pickled red onion. So again, the, these are red onions pickled in a combination of equal parts red wine vinegar and sugar, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, just season it with salt and pepper. All right, now the polenta's off our grill, it's nice and hot. It's incorporated that smokiness from the grill. I find it best to put the, uh, the asparagus down first, then the red onions will kind of help hold the tomatoes in place wherever you would like them. And then to finish this dish, we just have a 10 year age balsamic and a little bit of micro basil. And that's our grilled polenta. So now we're gonna do our grilled cheese, which is sort of a take on the classic flavors of grilled cheese, but not really the sandwich that you might be used to. So we have an aged midnight moon uh, goat cheese. It's six month aged goat cheese. It's made in Holland. We just dress it with a little bit of olive oil. It's plenty salty by itself, so we don't really need to season it. Now we're gonna put this on the grill and just very quickly let it get some of that smokiness. So as you can see, we've quite literally grilled the cheese. In addition to picking up that great smokiness, it's also made it nice and soft. We have some toasted brioche here that we just toasted in a little bit of butter. All right, we're gonna put the cheese straight on top of that brioche. And then to finish this, we have a little bit of tomato jam. This is a, we cook uh, fresh, fresh tomatoes with a little bit of ginger, um, tomato juice, and roasted garlic. This is just kind of emulate that tomato soup that is so classic with a grilled cheese sandwich. And then to finish the whole thing, we just, uh, we have some micro basil once again to reinforce those classic flavors. And that's our grilled cheese. That's our chicken fried watermelon. Right. So it's local watermelon that's actually chicken fried. There's no chicken in it whatsoever. And it's accompanied by pickled watermelon rind. So it's really a southern take on sweet and sour. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so it's hot and crispy on the outside, sweet and a little bit cold on the inside. An amazing taste. Yeah. And it's so clean. This is our grilled cheese. It's sort of a take on the classic American grilled cheese. Mm. Um, we use a really nice uh, six-month-aged goat cheese mm -hmm. from Cypress Grove. It's called Midnight Moon. And we actually grill it so um, it, it takes on some smokiness. It gets a little bit soft. And um, so that's kind of the obvious play on grilled cheese is actually grilling the cheese. And then, um, you know, we like to usually have it with the tomato soup. Mm -hmm. So we have this tomato jam that we make in house and then a little basil on top to kind of reinforce those flavors. Mm. The cheese is magnificent. Mm -hmm. That's our grilled polenta. Mm -hmm. It's uh, one of the more straightforward things that we do here. But um, the polenta is infused with a little bit of goat cheese in it. And then it's, uh, it's grilled, uh, so it's hot. And then we have the chilled salad on top of asparagus, pickled red onion, and uh, local cherry tomatoes. So it's just really clean, really fresh, um, light. And it's a nice play on, on or not play, but it's a nice you know, contradiction of, of hot and cold. And you got asparagus on it too. Mm -hmm. So this one, we finish it with 10-year um, aged balsamic from Italy, and then just a little bit of basil on top. Wow. Um, the, the food here, my food in general, um, we've started describing it as progressive comfort food mm -hmm. because you know a lot of the, the flavor profiles are similar to, to comfort food. I think 
that the food here kind of draws back on people's mm -hmm. experiences. It's very familiar, mm -hmm. that it, it's comforting in that way too. But, you know, down south you can't call anything comfort food if it's not deep fried and smothered in gravy. And out here in California they were willing to accept right away that mm. it doesn't have, have to, to have be gravy. that. gravy. In one word, how would you describe view? Undescribable. <laughs> well, that's good enough. Yeah. What we need, though, is to have wine instead of water. No, but absolutely. We're we'll be healthy this time. Thank you. Promote good living. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. And coming up next, the home of the famous lobster roll.